Real-time strategy games are a lot of fun. The original Age of Empires is what I remember the most about my early childhood, and I've enjoyed playing a heap of great RTS games over the years. My problem with RTS games is that I am garbage at them. My APM is deplorable, and I get dabbed on by anyone else remotely good at the game. Now then there's Battle Royale games. These aren't anywhere near as fun. I'm also garbage at these games too. So fortunately for me, Metaphor Games have come out with Waves of the Atlantide, a Battle Royale real-time strategy game. And I suck balls at it. Waves of the Atlantide is an interesting and refreshing take on the strategy genre, meshing together RTS gameplay with a map that will gradually shrink over time and force players into action, much like you'd get in a Battle Royale game. It's not a massive time sink and you're not going to have to invest hours of your time into each match, it's quick and to the point and doesn't mess around. Its shrinking map forces you to think more intelligently and rapidly, as terrain, city placement and your desperate push to survive the incoming tide all come into the mix. The game is still in early access and at this stage could certainly do with a bit more variety. It's rather bare bones at the moment and while it's a really neat concept, it still has a fair bit to build upon. Now, before I get into the bulk of this review, I would like to mention that I was lucky enough to receive a free copy of this game from the developers. I'd also like to mention that this has no impact on my opinion regarding this game and that it does not give it any extra sellout points for my review. But I am very grateful that Metaphor Games reached out to me and I thank them very much for this opportunity. For simplicity's sake, throughout this review I will be referring to this game as Wota. Not because I like the video game Dota, but because I like the Bass Hunter song about Dota. Though the game might look like a civilization game at first, it plays out completely differently. It's deceptively fast paced and intense, especially in the middle stages of the game. I went into this game thinking, you know, I'm, I'm alright at RTS games, I beat the uh, Age of Empires 3 campaign, and then I got my ass handed to me by the medium AI. It's very micro heavy. If, like me, your APM is garbage and your idea of multitasking is being able to play a video game without also stopping your breathing, Wojta is going to kick you in the balls. It'll catch you off guard with how much micro is actually involved. At the very start of the game it might seem a little more relaxed, but as soon as borders close in and battles start happening, this shit gets intense. And that's only amplified by the fact that the map will start closing in as land tiles will crumble into the sea, which will take out cities, tile upgrades and units alike. I actually really like the tidal wave mechanic that this game has. Not only does it create a sense of urgency and prevent games from going on for too long, but it means its city settlement location is very important and will have a big impact on the later stages of the game. Certain types of land are more susceptible to going underwater and cities and developed land in particular are at great risk, so one thing you'll need to manage is the longevity of your empire and making sure that all of your cities don't just disappear into the sea when the game starts to get hectic. It makes for an interesting bell curve pattern when it comes to a match's intensity levels. It will start out fairly basic and will become very hectic, but before too long resources and land start to disappear when the map closes in, which makes it much more interesting. What this game does is provide you with a real quick fix of action and gameplay. Instead of being dragged out over an hour or even longer, Woda is designed to be played quick and get you straight into the action. Kinda like the opposite of a real battle royale then I guess. It's a refreshing difference to more drawn out strategy games, and although it may not be the same kind of time sink that a Paradox or Total War game might be, it's short, to the point, and is a good game to have a bash in. It's a little disappointing that there isn't more variance in land tiles, perhaps different tiles or biomes could have different bonuses for tile improvements or cities settled upon them, which I think would further add to strategic city placement and variance between different games. Probably the biggest issue that this game has is that it plays out very similarly every time that you play. Due to a lack of multiple unit types and a pretty basic technology tree, there aren't too many different ways to tackle the core gameplay. Because of the fact that the game builds itself around short games, I think that it's important for it to have plenty of variety in the gameplay so that it's not just short bursts of the same thing over and over. And unfortunately, Woda falls into a bit of a pitfall here. Unlike other strategy games, Woda lacks multiple faction types with unique bonuses and also hasn't got multiple unit types, which really limits how you can lay out your strategy, at the very least when it comes to combat. Having a cavalry unit that moved faster but was weaker when attacking cities would be a cool idea, or perhaps a range support unit of some kind as well, because at the moment, the combat isn't a whole lot more than just throwing numbers at each other. Multiple unit types in a more fleshed out combat system would certainly go a long way towards helping you develop different strategies and builds, because at the moment basically the only real way to do that is through choosing certain paths in the tech tree. 
However, the tech tree is very basic at the moment. It's rather simple and it seems like there's a few techs that are basically necessary or you just kind of get steamrolled towards the end of the game. Unfortunately, there also wasn't anybody online to play against in multiplayer, which is a bit of a letdown for me because the medium AI was still kicking my ass and I was hoping that there was someone else who also sucked that I could play against. Visually, Woder is not the most impressive looking game on the market by any means, but I don't think that it needs to be considering the genre. Most importantly, it needs to be visually clear, and I believe that it does this relatively well. In classic RTS fashion, different factions are labelled by colour, so it's easy to differentiate between what is yours and what isn't. But unfortunately, you can't change your colour, which is a bit of a minor complaint, but like, come on. Let me be blue. Like a whooper. Overall, the sound design is fairly decent. The music is alright and just kind of goes along in the background, and you can always tell when a fight is going on because of the over-enthusiastic grunting that your units will do. They also brought in Farkett's beautiful Australian voice for the intro, so that was pretty neat. The game was a little bit crashy. I had a few instances where the game just kind of froze and then abruptly ended, which was rather disappointing. I get that it's still a fairly early build, but it was disappointing nonetheless. Overall, however, I did find the game to be reasonably well optimized and didn't run into any major game-breaking bugs or glitches in the gameplay itself. In the end, Waves of the Atlantide is a bit of a work in progress at the moment, but it's a game that has a clever concept and a lot of potential. If you're one of those madmen that just goes absolutely ham on RTS games like Age of Empires 2, then this is a game that I think you'd enjoy. There's no shortage of micromanaging to be done, especially once the game really gets going. It's a really good quick fix of strategy. A lot of strategy games may take up hours of your time, whereas Woda brings in a more urgent style of gameplay that means that games aren't going to be dragged out for ages and that you don't have to wait long for the action to start. The biggest issue this game has is a lack of variety. While it's a clever concept and I think that it's shrinking map ties in very well with the crux of the gameplay and the kind of game that it wants to be, there's a lack of flavour and it's clear that this game needs more variants to keep it interesting. So is Woda worth buying at the moment? Well, for what it is, it's not a terribly high price, but it's not exactly what you might call fleshed out at the moment. The game is still in early access, so we're hopefully going to see quite a bit more content added in the future. The game really just needs more flavour and variety added to it. But with Steam Workshop support recently added and a one-man dev team who appears to be very well invested in their product, Waves of the Atlantide is certainly a title to keep your eyes on.